gonna come shoot me, kill me. If you're not gonna kill me, stop shooting me. Don't come for me unless you're gonna come and get me. This is Tupac, who's speaking to Jimmy Henchman because of a robbery and an assassination attempt that happened in 1994, which Jimmy was responsible for. Jimmy was just as dangerous of a producer as Suge Knight was. He wanted to kill Tupac, 50 Cent, and even Suge Knight. His real name is James Roseman, born on February 5th, 1965 in New York. Jimmy first went to jail at age 16 for stealing a bicycle. He was later arrested for illegal possession of a weapon. At 18, he was charged with first degree robbery and second degree murder. And with that, let us now get into something a little more interesting. In 1994, Tupac was heading to Quad Recording Studios. There he came across two robbers, and this led to him being shot multiple times. Pac received at least two bullets to the head, but he still managed to survive. He was robbed of $40,000. Reporter Chuck Phillips, who was investigating this case for 10 years, reported why Jimmy decided to harm Tupac. It all started out of envy, because Tupac was loved and he received a lot of attention from the public. Jimmy was an average drug dealer, and when he realized that one can earn more from music than from drugs, he decided to dive into the music industry. And then, he and Haitian Jack started a management company called How I Can Be Down, saying they would represent artists for labels. Haitian Jack was one of those who was able to immerse Pac into the world of luxury living and introduced him to famous artists like Madonna. And as for Jimmy himself, he didn't wear suits. Instead, he dressed modestly, sold drugs, and robbed people. Because of this, Tupac paid more attention to Jack. But despite the efforts of these two to get Tupac Shakur, they didn't succeed. Jimmy was pissed off, and another thing happened. During that period, when Tupac was dealing with a rape trial at a club in New York, a reporter asked him about his case. And Tupac responded with, I didn't have anything to do with that. They're a bunch of hanger-ons. He'd called Jack and Jimmy hanger-ons, and ultimately, this is what pissed off Jimmy. As for the night of the shooting, Jimmy told Dexter Isaac, I want you to come down to do this thing at the quad for me. They did it for that reason, to teach him a lesson. Jimmy wanted to relay a message along the lines of, you think Haitian Jack is the real gangster? Well, he's not the real gangster. I'm the real gangster. Dexter Isaac confirmed that he took part in this robbery. In 1994, James Roseman hired me to rob Tupac Shakur at the Quad Studio, said Dexter. He gave me $2,500, plus all the jewelry I took except for one ring which he wanted for himself. It was the biggest of the two diamond rings that we took. He said he wanted to put the stone in a new setting for his girlfriend at the time, Cynthia Reed. I still have as proof the chain that we took that night in the robbery. I want to apologize to his family and for the mistake I did for that sucker. Hours before the shooting, Tupac was arguing on the phone with Jimmy right there, telling him, you know you've got to pay me in cash. You've got too much money. All this was happening as Jimmy's men were on their way to the studio. When Tupac was interviewed by Vibe while he was in jail, he described the incident saying, they didn't go after Stretch and he was the biggest guy in the group. They came after me. After the robbery, Big Stretch delivered a message from Jimmy to Tupac. And Jimmy Henchman said to, he said, Pac, you don't got enough money, you don't want to go to war with him. And he was like, Jimmy Henchman said, you know, get your money right, then go to war. I'm looking at the situation like, that's kind of odd right there. You're supposed to be Pac homie, but you bringing him a message from his enemies. Just remember what you told him. You said, don't go to war unless I got my money right. Now I want war. Jimmy was an informant for that long time. He was an informant on the night when Tupac was at the studio. In fact, Jimmy booked that studio, but was never even interviewed by the police. Promise to pay back Jimmy Henchman in due time. I know you bitch niggas is listening. The world is mine. The ripple effects of what Jimmy did made everyone in the music industry take notice. That if a guy like Tupac can get touched, so can anyone else. In a Vibe magazine interview, Jimmy admits he set it up. He had a conversation with Tupac telling him to stop telling everybody that he, Puff, or Biggie were involved. Nobody came there to kill you that night. You're talking all this shit and you don't know what you're talking about. We came here to discipline you. The message was clear. You better not mess with Jimmy Henchman or this is what's gonna happen to you. That I can go on with my career, that I could really put this behind me and nobody else don't have to ask me about Tupac Shakur. 
1996, Jimmy created his own label called Czar Entertainment and was the manager of The Game, who became a member of G-Unit. Relations between The Game and 50 Cent deteriorated, and Tony Yayo explained why this happened. I'll tell you the poison in that was Jimmy Henchman. Do you think that was the Jimmy problem? Henchman never liked Chris Lighty. Oh. He never liked Chris Lighty. For those who don't know who Chris Lighty is, he is 50's former manager who died in 2012. One day, G-Unit members Tony Yayo and Lodi Mack noticed Jimmy Henchman's 14-year-old son walking to work to his dad. And the guys decided to deliver a few words to the game's manager. Some sources reported that when the thugs asked Jimmy's son how old he was, and he replied saying 14, Yayo responded with, I don't give a fuck how old you are, Xar Entertainment, then backhanded him across the face so that his head hit the wall. Naturally, he recounted this incident to his dad, and as a result, both were arrested. Mac was sentenced to two years in prison, and Tony was sentenced to only 10 days of community service. That's because Lodi took responsibility for harming the teenager. On the phone, I heard Ye smack the shit out of kid. Now Jimmy got life, we'll smack him again. After being released from prison, Lodi Mac was murdered in what was believed to be revenge for Henchman's son. Prosecutors claim that Jimmy ordered for Lodi to be murdered in exchange for two kilos of cocaine. In addition, Dave Lighty was attacked with a razor, Tony Yayo's Bentley was shot at, and the rapper's mother's house was shot at as well. Twelve shots were fired, but that was not the end of it, as a bulletproof car from G-Unit was blown up as well. It is assumed that this was an attack on G-Unit as well as 50 Cent. Jimmy had multiple assassination attempts, as Tony recalls. When 50 Cent and Akon were filming the music video for I Still Kill, someone wanted to kill them. But I guess they didn't know how to handle a weapon or something like that. It's in the paperwork. And the gun went off in the car. So as the gun went off in the car, I guess it jammed and they backed out of what they wanted to do. 50 Cent left a dead rat on his doorstep, followed by mysterious phone calls to his house. But that's not even the end of the story. Jimmy also had questions for Suge Knight. At the 2005 MTV Video Music Awards party in Miami hosted by Kanye West, Suge was shot in the leg. As a photographer who was at the party recalls, and I quote, Jimmy Hinchman says, come with me, I want you to get this photograph. I just saw Suge Knight by the bar. I said, Jimmy, I don't think it's a wise idea for you to go over there. He says, nah, it's a wise idea, get your camera. When I give you the head nod, I want you to get this photo. I'm like, okay. So next thing I know, I follow him. And there's Suge Knight leaned up against the bar. And with his talented blow, he'd make a perfect circle of cigar smoke. And I'm like, oh shit, what the hell? So next thing I know, I saw Suge inhale. And when he exhaled, he blew out a perfect circular ring of smoke right into Jimmy's face. Then Jimmy did one head nod to the left and then looked at me and did one head nod to me. And I'm like, what am I shooting? Some guy with a musket just comes from behind Suge and boom, shoots him right there. A few years later, it became known who shot Suge. Mohammed Stewart, who was a drug dealer and a colleague of Jimmy Henchman, took responsibility for this. According to him, Jimmy gave him $10,000 and personally handed him the gun. Mohammed also admitted that it was he who committed the murder attempt on Chris Lighty's brother. In 2010, the New York Daily News reported that Roseman had acted as a cooperating witness with authorities on more than one occasion. In 1996, while serving time in North Carolina for charges relating to narcotics and weapons, Roseman reportedly notified authorities that four of his fellow inmates had invited him to participate in a planned escape attempt. In 1997, Roseman was said to have cooperated with authorities in order to gain leniency for bail jumping charges back in New York. Allegedly, he described how staff members at the correctional facility in which he'd been detained had altered official documents so that he could appear to have posted bail legally. In June of 2010, Jimmy was arrested on charges of cocaine trafficking, money laundering, and witness tampering. In 2012, Jimmy Henchman was convicted in a federal district court in Brooklyn of drug trafficking, obstruction of justice, firearms violations, and other financial crimes associated with his position as head of a multi-million dollar transnational cocaine selling organization. During trial, it was alleged that Roseman led the large-scale bi-coastal narcotics trafficking organization that 
transported cocaine from Los Angeles, California to the New York metropolitan area. The group, known as the Roseman Organization, in turn shipped cash proceeds from the narcotic sales back to Los Angeles using a variety of methods as part of its operation. Millions of dollars in cash and narcotics were sent through Federal Express and United Parcel Service, often covered in mustard to avoid discovery by detection dogs. On October 25, 2013, Roseman was sentenced to life imprisonment. And in 2018, Jimmy Henchman received two life sentences for the murder of Lodi Mack. And I want to apologize to those that I let down for letting some suckers play me. And um, I just want you to know, man, that um, I just, I didn't know. I just didn't know that these dudes was that jealous. That jealousy would allow them or make them do the things that they did. The next video that I recommend you watch is about the most brutal assaults of Suge Knight. Thanks everyone for watching, subscribe to the channel, and see you soon.